Hello and Namaste. Recently I was reading an article by a thoughtful author, David Gelles. He says that you cannot simply buy mindfulness. Uh, in its historical context, I'm quoting, mindfulness is just one aspect of a lifelong journey to become more accepting, less judgmental, and kinder to oneself and others. Even in its modern incarnation, mindfulness is best understood as a skill one acquired through hours of sometimes uncomfortable contemplation. It's a very important point. The journey of the mindfulness begins with the peace and happiness and it ends with discovery of inner peace and happiness. I quote again, increasingly mindfulness is being packaged as one minute reprieve, an interlude between checking Instagram and starting the next episode of House of Cards. Our company proclaims it has found the minimum effective dose of meditation that will change your life. What is this dose? On Amazon, you can pick up one minute mindfulness, 50 simple ways to find peace, clarity, new possibilities in a stressed out world. Dubious courses promise to help people master mindfulness in few weeks." Unquote. <clears throat> so how in that, uh, in that state of the world we can uh, move into the right mindfulness? Uh, just uh, an understanding that do you grow your body in height and shape and the size? One day the body is born, the other day it is sick, the next day it is healthy, it becomes old and dies, and goes to the cremation ground. The same body in deep sleep, the nature pushes us into a deep sleep, and we become nobody, and enjoy that state of the happiness. We don't know it. Can we discover and become aware being nobody as it happens in deep sleep? It is a lifelong journey. One minute will not do. Five minutes will not do. <laughs> the skill will not do. It goes beyond the skills. The author is right. And what happens in our waking state? Body is constantly running working like a machine, it listens to your mind, works, works, and works. But in mindfulness state, you have a right perception. Is it a skill to have a right perception? I'm looking at you, the mind, going through the senses, falls on you, and I'm looking at you. Come on, is it really a skill? When the mind simply looks at you without any inhibition, clinging and the attachment, we are in the mood, we are in the mode of right perception. Then we discover we are not the body, we awaken that, we are something different from the body. So first, we become nobody. We drop the identification with the body. Uh, what it looks like. So simple. You park the car outside in a parking slot and you move inside the home. Exactly the same casual, natural movement of the mind. Deeper inside leads you to the mindfulness. There is nothing uncomfortable about it. You're not doing anything. 
Look at the second aspect. We talk a lot about uh, mindful of your breathing. Intellectually, we are mindful of the breathing as if the glass is empty. And I say to you, okay, come on, take a glass of water. Hit it. And you drink it. And you feel something good. No. The mindful of the breath doesn't work that way. What is common in all food, the elements, those chemicals, and what is common in life living, it is the life force. So life force is same in insects, reptiles, mammals, plants, and human beings. It is same. But that life force manifests differently in all beings. It does not mean that it is different. Like electricity, it is the same in fan, in heater, in cooler, in bulb, in car, in all machines. It is the same, but manifestation is different. Can I become aware of that life force means being mindful of the breathing. That is the right perception. And the life force is neither me nor it belongs to me. It is another level of right perception. And once we move into that, then there is a state of the mindfulness. Then come to the mind. The mind is also the same in all beings. The mind shows its higher capacity in the skills based on the body, the instrument. Like the processor, like the RAM that we have in our computer. You increase the RAM, you increase, or you replace the solid state drive instead of the normal hard drive the speed so when the speed increases then then you have a lot of perception so mind is same in all of us but what happens then where lies the problem for example when the mind looks at you the mind says, you are beautiful, it is okay. We should appreciate the beauty or the fact. But when he says, you are beautiful in something within me, like supersess you, relate to you, enjoy you. Question comes, why? Why I want to enjoy you, possess you, relate to you? Because we can find out and we can easily understand that I feel inside that I'm incomplete. So when I will possess you, relate to you, and enjoy you, I will get a sense of completeness. But is that completeness, is the experience of that completeness will give me peace and happiness? So that sense of incompleteness goes with the incomplete knowledge and understanding about who am I. So third point, the mindfulness helps us to know who am I. At present, there is an incompleteness, there is incomplete knowledge. So all mindfulness or meditation practices leads us to wisdom, a clear understanding. So then what happens? First that I feel I'm incomplete without you or a thing or a relationship outside. Second, is incomplete knowledge that I will be able to complete myself by possessions, things and relations. And we have billions of impressions. So one minute my mindfulness will not do. It is just a setting point. It is a journey. 
one has it is not a destination so so what happens with that incomplete ness and me and incomplete knowledge i create wealth relations and possessions then what happens then i have a fear of losing them then what happens that fear breeds anger and greed <clears throat> So then there is a vicious circle. In Eastern psychology, we call all the contents of the mind as vritti. They move in a circle. They work like a pre-recorded DVD. Here the mindfulness journey comes. Desire fulfilled causes greed. Desire unfulfilled creates anger. So now we have uh, twin brothers and sisters in the form of a desire, fear, greed, anger, they all create a big ego. And then we all know what happens to our life. Mindfulness is a right perception that follows the right action. Incomplete knowledge and feeling something missing within is the cause of all stress and the suffering in our life. So now comes what the great teachers uh, teach us. We are complete. But I feel the sense of incompleteness. And they labor that state of the consciousness as the real self. You can name anything. It doesn't matter. You should remain free from the cult, release, and dogma belief when you practice mindfulness. Otherwise, it will suck you. It will create a cult. It will create another clinging. So then what happens? Because mind can never give us the right knowledge or a complete knowledge, so mindfulness is explained, or any meditation is explained as transcending the mind. But you cannot transcend the car by car. For example, mind is like a machine. So you start, there comes hundreds of different approaches and the practices and the tool. But uh, the main thing is that we start using the mind and the time comes when we realize it is the mind that causes these complementary opposites that causes me the stress and the mind is left. The moment you leave, you are in the state of mindfulness. Leaving here means that now you have discovered something higher that is free from conflict and confusion, that is full of knowledge and wisdom, and that is the higher state of the consciousness that is what we say it is the state of the being and then you move into the right perception and in that state of the right perception mind drops and dissolves all its clinging it discovers the inner peace and happiness and you you as an individual experience the way the word explains Eureka, Eureka, I have found it, I have found it. What you have found it? Inner peace and happiness. So what happens in that, in that finding, in that discovery? Can your mind still uh, crave for things outside? With a sense of incompleteness or with a sense of incomplete knowledge? No. But... The mind has billions and the trillions of impressions. So it has to be a journey. You practice, you treat the path, you continue the journey, and you leave everything. Oh, let me continue my journey. And one day comes, you start evolving yourself. Mind undergoes a natural transformation. And then what happens? Now you don't practice mindfulness. You live, move, and act in mindfulness. 
That is what the mindfulness uh, program and the practices that we do every week. Thank you.